Hello and welcome to the Kimono Spark Highlight Show. In this week's edition, we'll recap the race card from Saturday, September 3. Ten races were on offer, including the feature event, the Winston Fanner Griffiths Audi Classic. This was named in honor of five-time champion rider and the winningest jockey in the history of Kimana Spark, Winston Fanner Griffiths. Let's begin our highlights package with race one from Saturday. This was a three-year old and up optional claiming race named in honor of Virene. This was the first official winner of Winston Fanner Griffiths. Horse number seven, Zabra Tone, was a late non-starter. It appears we have a line there off in racing. Marginally missing it at the back of the field, that's Rackaway, as they blast past the a six and a half for a long point, heading to the six. It is Fabulosity, just the leader from these choice. Tough right against the rail as they pass the six. That's Angelos, right behind Angelos. And coming on the rail, that's War of the Roses. Then comes Dr. Gray, behind Dr. Gray. That is a blood, sweat, and tear as they pass the five and racing at the back of the field. That is Rackaway. They head toward the four for a long point. And it's a war up front with Fabulosity, just the leader. Fabulosity kicking the, just the leader from Angelos right against the rail. These twice left back in third. Two lengths away before we come to War of the Roses, racing in fourth. Then comes racing in fifth. That is uh, Blood, Sweat and Tears. Dr. Gray comes next and tailing off badly. That's Rackaway. They're coming to the top of the lane. And it is Angelos right against the rail. In between horses, that is Fabulosity out wide. And coming on, that's Dee's choice, but Angelos looks to have first run on them. It's Angelos in front, still, the, still there and fighting on. It's Fabulosity, Dee's choice out wide, but Angelos is traveling nicely. Coming to the furlong pole, Angelos in front, Dee's choice is trying to put in a challenge on the outside. Angelos at the half of furlong pole in front, and Angelos begins to pull away. Angelos will win the first. Angelos going on by maybe four lengths. Dee's choice is second. Dr. Gray runs on to be third. Got tight for fourth between Fabulosity and War of the Roses. Angelo's ridden by former champion rider Christopher Mamdeen landed the day's first event. 1 minute 28 and 1 fifth was the winning time, going 1400 meters. Two horses were scratched from the day's second event, the three-horse Hunter's Ridge and the Importy Audibility. Very late scratch in Hunter's Ridge, unruly behavior. They're off in racing, came out in a good line. Little Buzz shows speed and goes for that lead. Valiant racing in second, a length and a half to Truly City. And the outside of Truly City, that three card guy as they go past the five prolonged point. Little Buzz bouncing easily on that lead. Truly City hunting up on the rail and Truly City goes on with Little Buzz. These two as they pass the four locked together. Then comes right there, that's Valiant back in third. Three card guy is right there too in fourth. About two and a half, maybe three lengths separating them all as they come toward the three. It is right on the rail, Truly City. On the outside, that's Little Buzz. Truly City, just the leader. Little Buzz is still there in with a chance. Also coming on, that is Valiant, but still making the running. Truly City now kicks Valiant, goes down into second. Little Buzz has faded into third. Three card guy is left out of it, racing at the back of the field there at the furlong and a half pole, heading to the furlong pole. Truly City in front and traveling nicely. Truly City looks to have this one, but coming on, Valiant not quitting. Truly City holding Valiant. Truly City holding them all. Valiant trying hard and Valiant cutting into that lead. Truly City tying up Valiant. Truly City just holding on from Valiant. Three card guy runs on to be third. And Little Buzz is for it. Troller City, partnered by Aaron Chartery, managed to edge Valiant. Trained by Kevin Brevet, Troller City clocked 1 minute 19 seconds flat, going 1200 meters. The six horse Lucky Plumber was a late scratch for the third event. This saw a reduced field of five runners to compete over 1,100 meters. 1100 meters ready for a start. They're off and racing. Very good line. Always vigorous. Just the leader from Jungle Cat right there as they go past the five. Bubbly Girl racing in third. Magic Bullet is fourth. And the last one is a Tiger Bella. 
heading past the four furlong and it is always vigorous a half a length in front of uh, jungle cat racing in second three lengths away to bubbly girl magic bullet comes next and tiger bella still racing at the back they go past the three heading to the two and a half furlong point and always vigorous stretches the lead to a length a length and a half or maybe two from chasing in second that's jungle cat always vigorous in front making his intentions clear, always vigorous. Jungle Cat switch right against the rail, trying to come forward. Always vigorous, traveling very powerfully on that lead. Coming to the furlong pole, always vigorous. Is not for catching today, always vigorous. Telling them, ta-ta, off a furlong to travel, always vigorous. He's down in the end by O'Neill Scott. Cheeky rider, posing for the pictures, always vigorous. Wins the third, Jungle Cat is second. Third, Bubbly Girl, fourth, Magic Bullet. At odds of 6 to 5, always vigorous romp to victory in the day's third. Jungle Cat, Bubbly Girl, and Magic Bullet were your top four finishers. The fourth event saw jockey Shavon Townsend replacing Mario Chung aboard Contractor. Eight phase to the starter for this three year old and up optional claiming race going 1,000 meters. Five furlong straight, best of luck if you play the Early pick five, they're off and racing. Breaking over towards the far side, that's Boss Izzy. Breaking in the middle, that's a cappella. Contractor is very prominent in the middle. Black Royalty and uh, Cupcake are closest to us, right in the middle. And attacking across, that's Blue Attitude. This is the way they come towards the uh, three furlong point. It is on the far side, Boss Izzy. Just with that lead, right in the right beside Boss Izzy, that's Contractor. These two are fighting for it. A cappella is right there on the premises too. Two furlongs to travel. It's Boss Izzy, marginally with the lead. Switch towards the inside of Boss Izzy. That's Contractor. A cappella is right there. Here comes Blue Attitude coming forward purposely. It Blue Attitude. A cappella in front of Blue Attitude. Driven. It's Blue Attitude and A cappella. This is where the race lies. Blue Attitude. A cappella. Blue Attitude. Looks like A cappella could have added it over Blue Attitude. Then comes Boss Izzy and Contractor. But it's very close. It's a photo finish. It was a quick double for jockey Aaron Chartry. Having won the day's second race, Chartry was back inside the winner's enclosure aboard a cappella in the fourth. One minute and one fifth of a second was the winning time, going 1,000 meters. The fifth event saw Patrick Lynch's show curlin sent off as a 6 to 5 favorite. Lynch, sitting on 399 career wins, had eyes set on securing his 400 career win at Kimanas Park. And they're off and racing. Queen T steps a bit slowly. Uh, JB Fly didn't get away too keen either, as Joyful and uh, Shore Curlin mix it up, passing the five. Right there behind them, that is uh, the, re the good life as Joyful goes on from the good life. Sure, Curlin shuffles back in third. Right there coming around, that's Lady Pujari. Then comes Chinese Music. Behind Chinese Music, Nakamura. Then comes a Fearless Vibe. Behind Fearless Vibe, Queen T and JB Flyer lagging at the back. They come toward the two, fur, two and a half furlong point on the course, Joyful in front and traveling well. Also there, that sure curling back in third against the rail, the good life as the rain begins to fall. It is still joyful in front and traveling well. Could this be trainer Patrick Lynch? 400th win, Joyful is traveling well, Short Curlin is right there in second, he might even have the exact, Joyful is traveling nicely, passing, coming to the half of long pole, Joyful, and this is surely a joyful day for Patrick Lynch, 400th winner, Joyful, romping the fifth, second, Short Curlin, he has the exact, third goes to Nakamura, fourth to the good life, it's either Fearless Vibe or Queen T for the I-5. Victory number 400 for Patrick the Professor Lynch. Joyful creating a mild upset over Shaw Curling to hand Lynch a 1 to 2 finish in the day's fifth. It's now time for a break on the Kimana Park highlight show. On the other side, we'll recap the remaining races on the card from Saturday, August 3. This included the day's feature, the Winston Fanna Griffiths OD Classic.
Welcome back to the Kimono Spark Highlight Show. In the second half of our presentation, we'll recap races 6 to 10. We'll also have a look at some of the achievements of the legendary five time champion rider Winston Fanner Griffiths. Let's continue our highlights package with race 6. A field of 15 faced at the starter covering the distance of 1,000 meters or 5 for long straight. Looks to be all in, five for a long straight the trip. This is race number six, they're off and racing right away. Code of conduct braked toward the far side. Right in the middle, that's best daughter-in-law racing prominent. We can also see the colors of Naya, that's whiskey. Lord Burkington is early. Also there, that is the jour. Right against the fence, that's Babylon will fall phenometer. They're spread right across the track, but the action looks to be with Right on the far side, that's Traveler's Lodge, best daughter-in-law. This is where the action is. Right there, too, is Whiskey. In the middle, that's Rambling Rose. Under the fence, Lord Burkington and Phenometer. They're spread right across the track as they come toward the two furlong point. Phenometer might just have the overall lead from Lord Burkington. Bursting through on the far side and coming on. That's Babylon Will Fall. Babylon Will Fall is flying on the, the middle. And Babylon Will Fall. Lord Burkington, Babylon Will Fall. Looks to be Lord Burkington over Phenometer. Babylon Will Fall. Then a, a heap for the, for the fourth and the fifth. In a thrilling finish, Lord Birkington managed to edge Phonometer only by a head. 59 and 3 fifths was the winning time, going 1,000 meters. The day 7 was a restricted allowance contest for fillies and mares. Jason da Costa's entry, Fly Messenger Fly, was a 6 to 5 favorite. Five furlongs round the trip, they're off and racing. That's a very good line as gracefully made shows speed and goes for that lead as they blast toward the four furlong point. Wautastic keeping company. It's Wautastic now in front of gracefully made. Minnie the Wack comes next. Baby Like is right there too. As they come toward the three furlong point, Wautastic in front and is about two lengths in front of gracefully made. Right there too, that's Minnie the Wack coming out wide and in from view at the moment and uh, coming around that is marketplace right against the rail here comes uh, lacrimai it's wautastic in front lacrimai is really coming forward uh, against the rail wautastic in front we cannot withstand lacrimai uh, uh, for furlong to travel lacrimai wautastic not yet done wautastic and lacrimai lacrimai begins to go away wautastic trying to fight back lacrimai beats wautastic middle of the whack alexa secret and rapunzel lacrimai ridden by bebito javi for 11 time champion trainer philip fiani secured the day seventh event Winning by a length, Lacrimai posted a winning time of 1 minute, 3 fifths of a second, going 1,000 meters or 5 furlongs round. The 8th event was the day's feature, the Winston Van Griffiths OD Classic. Named in honor of five-time champion rider and the winningest jockey in the history of Kimana Spark, Winston Fanna Griffiths. Here's a look at some of his achievements over an illustrious career. Idolized in the Caribbean as the benchmark for assessing jockeys, the name Winston Fanny Griffiths remains synonymous with the sport of kings. What started out as a natural love for animals would eventually lead to achievements receiving global recognition. In the beginning, I tell myself that, you know, I would love to become a jockey. Eventually, years passed by until I met a person by the name of Percival Hamlinson, who, when I met him, asked me, if I'd love to become a jockey, which was my thrill. Griffiths began his jockey's apprenticeship in 1975, shortly after he developed an appreciation for the temperament of horses, a skill that was instrumental to him securing his first winner that same year. As an apprentice, when I met um, this jockey by the name of Joe Mercer, which I thought he's an idol to me, and I asked him quite a few questions, which he explained to me about riding. Eventually, I tried to patronize his riding as an apprentice, and from there on, I took it into my head and decided that this is the way. 
and eventually it works for me. A horse is a horse just like a human being. A horse doesn't use whip to get him to run. A whip is just a reminder. Normally, yes, you carry a whip. When a horse starts to idle, you give him a tap here and there. So if you don't have to hit a horse, then you can show him the whip, which I use to fan him. And there is where I got the name fan him. Having watched in awe at the exploits of four-time champion rider George Sang, Griffiths openly credits the jockeys and the trainers who contributed immensely to his career. The first one was really Kenneth Mattis, and I really had a good relationship with Kenneth until after a couple of years, we were successful. And finally, I make a change, which changed up to Mr. Fiani, which is where I am now. And it was fantastic over the years. We have so many wins which are unrecalled, but history is there to tell its tales. When I started riding, George Hosang was really the top rider. I really watched him and decided to myself that I really want to become the champion. And after I get all the experience from Joe Mercer, there's where I take on the role and decide that boy, I really want to become the champion. Griffiths' stellar career includes five jockeys titles, four of which came between 1978 and 1981. This period included a memorable ride in 1981 aboard Royal Dad, who became Jamaica's first Triple Crown winner. They're a furlong and a half away from home, and Royal Dad is fighting back on the bus. And now Royal Dad begins to show his class in the derby. He begins to sprint away from them. Winston Griffiths will land his first derby this afternoon. Royal Dad becomes a super horse in Jamaica. He wins it over the bus and forceful native. Griffiths' most memorable year in the saddle came in 1992. That year, he partnered with many time winning trainer Philip Fiani to secure an unprecedented five classic wins in a calendar year. Having been conferred with the Order of Distinction in 1999, Griffiths' impressive resume includes being Caricom's all time leading jockey in wins with a total of 1,664. This is what I want to say to SDRL. I really want to thank them so much what they have done for me, knowing to myself that um, this could be the highest peak of my career as a rider and for me to really um, put up my towel and decide that boy, I call it a day and for them to really recognize me, to really put a name in my name, I really want to say thanks to them and I really appreciate it a lot. They're often racing in the Winston Griffiths Classic. Going for that lead, that's Great Trick, tugging hard. Brinks follows in second. Morimoto comes next in third. Right there, too. On the outside, that's on Ruli Dude, very early. Recovering, that is a Perfect Brew. Sunset Silhouette beside Perfect Brew. Then comes Pellicula and racing at the back, marginally at the back, the head corner stone. As waking the runnings, that is a great trick, leading them towards the six furlong point on the course. Being hounded by Brinks, racing in second, right there in third. That is a unruly dude. Morimoto races in fourth as they turn around over on the backstretch, racing towards the five furlong point, and it is still making the runnings. Great trick, just a leader from Brinks, settled back in second, passing the five. Great trick in front, brings not in any hurry, racing in se second, P uh, running up on the rail. That is a perfect brew in third. Also, there is Morimoto, the head cornerstone is right there too. Then comes Pellicula, then comes in second to last. That is Sunset Silhouette, and Unruly Dude is out of it at the moment. Brinks now assumes authority. Brinks goes on by two lengths, and the writing may be on the wall. Brinks in front. Rushing down on the outside, that's Perfect Brew. Does Perfect Brew has anything to offer Brinks? They're at the top of the lane. Brinks trying to take home the money in the Winston Griffiths Classic. It's Brinks in front, kicking away from Perfect Brew. Out wide, Morimoto looks to, come, looks to be coming forward. Brinks paced against the rail in front, about four lengths. Inside the final furlong, Morimoto running a big one. Brinks though, denying Morimoto. Morimoto driven for all his worth. Brinks is still in front and Brinks will bring home the money in the second running of the Winston Griffiths Classic. Brinks beats Morimoto. Perfect brew and the head cornerstone.
The money truck Brinks was in fine form to secure the Winston Fana Griffiths Audi Classic. Having placed the second in the derby, Brinks, ridden by Ryan Lewis for Ian Prasad, completed the 1900-meter trip in a new stakes record of 2 minutes and 3 fifths of a second. Race 9 was a 3-year-old and up overnight allowance event. 10 faced the starter, going 1,000 meters of 5 furlongs round. They're off and racing. K-Boy misses it and is left at the back of the field. Rushing up to take them on, that is a capture my ship as they head toward the capture my ship and a super duper. These two locked in battle, racing in third, that's Emperor of the Cats. Then comes Baton Rouge, right against the rail, El Professor. Then comes Generational, Alexa's Lodge. Then comes right there at the back of the field and going nowhere and re recovering a bit, that's K-Boy. They're at the top of the lane and it is capture my ship, just the leader. Out wide, that is uh, super duper. Emperor, Emperor of the Cats is coming on the rail. It's still capture my ship, Emperor of the Cats. Here comes El Professor coming down the middle of the racetrack with purpose. It's still El Professor, capture my ship, capture my ship, going in and could, looks to be interfering with with Emperor of the Cats, but it is El Professor, El Professor beating Generational Capture My Ship. Then comes Emperor of the Cats. El Professor, conditioned by Patrick Lynch, handed jockey Ryan Lewis a quick double. Lewis, who was aboard Brings in the day's feature, partnered El Professor to register a final time of 59 and two fifths of a second, going five furlongs round. The three-horse Captain My Ship, who was third past the post, was disqualified and placed fourth. The day's tenth and final saw sensational ending, the mount of Anthony Thomas for Jason DaCosta being a late non-starter. Ready for a start, they're off and racing. Rusty misses it and is left at the back early. Charming Beauty trying to clear that. 12 hole as they come towards the six furlong point on the course and it's the speedy past the boo sensational gold right alongside so it's sensational gold and past the boos right there too that's fault line right against the rail rusty recovering and going down into fourth then comes it is what it is racing in fifth as they head toward the four furlong point on the course it is Sensational gold, past the booze in attendance in second. Rusty is right there in third. Fourth line is stacked onto the tail in fourth. Three, a break of four lengths before we come to it. It was, it is. Charming beauty, passing that one. Also trying to come on, that is a heavenly glitter. They pass the three and come towards the two and a half furlong point. It is sensational gold, clinging to that lead, past the booze. Comes a calling on the outside, sensational gold. In front, past the booze out wide. Watch on the inside switch now in the middle. That's Rusty. Sensational goal hanging on from Rusty. Sensational goal being driven out. Rusty coming forward intently. Also coming on his fault line. Sensational goal. Rusty comes a calling. They pass the furlong pole. It's sensational goal hanging on from Rusty. Sensational goal keeps on rolling. Rusty is still coming. Sensational goal hanging Rusty. Sensational goal holding Rusty at bay. Sensational goal by maybe a neck. Rusty second. Heavenly Glitter, the Heavenly Glitter runs on to be third, fourth line is fourth. Panamanian rider Dick Cardenas was aboard Sensational Gold for a trip to the winner's enclosure. One minute to 28 and four-fifths was the winning time, covering 1,400 meters. As we recap another thrilling weekend of racing, it was highlighted by Brink's victory in the Winston Fana Griffiths OD Classic. There were two wins apiece for jockeys Aaron Chowdhury and Rayanne Lewis. Meanwhile, there were also two wins for trainer Patrick Lynch, who also secured his 400th victory at Kimanas Park with Joyful in the fifth event. This has been another edition of the Kimanas Park Highlight Show. I'll see you next time.
Winston Brinks will bring home the money in the second running of the Winston Griffiths Classic. Brinks beats Morimoto.